to harmony, to work for this kind of thing, right? And the goal really is to recognize this personality, personalities and then at the same time transform them and convert them into, uh, so that you can use it as a strong foundation, foundation so you can move forward in a walking way. So is that true? try to create a system, not really a system, but you would, you would know that they have certain roles and you want to fulfill those roles. So you would prepare those roles for them to fulfill. Otherwise, they would just do anything they wanted to do. And that would be you providing these roles for them to, for, for them to fulfill so in order to make the house more harmonious and more functional. So you would try to work the same way with personalities, but with personalities, you have the, the reflective reality and how each of the personalities and the lower nature is, is represented in the different forms of, of uh, the different forms of this reality and in nature. So as you interact with the as you interact with the reflective reality and how it <laughs> has, and how each personality has a connection to some form or person, then those people, forms, act as catalysts to train those personalities and give them their roles so that they don't just act according to how they are, how they naturally correspond to the the, re the reflective uh, object or person, they react according to how you want them, want them to because you've prepared the role for them to act that way. Everything, when it comes to development, it always depends on preparation. You have to prepare a way. If you don't prepare a way, then things are gonna act according to their nature. Does that answer the question? Um, that makes sense to me now. The question is about the preparation. Because yesterday you said, I mean, you don't have the right amount of like, even energy to begin with, and even starting is really difficult for you. Well, think about what um, the Gandhi quote. Right. The Gandhi quote is basically what I was saying. I mean, you have to, when you begin something, you have to begin it in the right mindset. And you have to begin it with the right energy. Like if you be if you attempt to begin something while continuously doubting yourself, then obviously that's not the right way to begin it. But if you're really trying to prepare something as uh, prepare something to like prepare have preparation for some form of development, then you have to begin with the right mindset. You have to adopt the right mindset. Like when I look at the Gandhi prayer, the Gandhi uh, saying, I see prayer. Because to me, that's what prayer is. Prayer is, um, is uh, to me, prayer is, you know, you have a prayer, you want to be something, or you want something. Well, you have to begin to embody it. 
You have to accommodate it so that it can grow in you, so that that prayer can become a reality. So you will have to begin to, you will have to begin to actually do the things that you want. If you want to become a certain thing, you have to actually be it. And then you may, then the laws will move. And then you will gain, then you will gain the capacity to actually fulfill it. By, but it, but it takes the beginning part where you have to, you have to start with the right mindset. This is also why I said that if you hold to the mindset of even the New Age collective consciousness, that's as limiting as the Jesus God. This is why we've talked about that unless you build upon the proper cosmology of mind, and you at least have some idea of the blueprint of self, when you go and build a house, you don't just start nailing pieces of wood together. You gotta have an idea of what you're doing. Well, in all esoteric or all seekers of truth, they have to have an idea of what the framework of self is, to even to begin to know self. If you see yourself in a serf or peasant mindset that whose job is to satisfy the royal family of Jesus God, his Father God, and the vague Holy Spirit then you'll stay nothing but exactly where you are. If you think that you are the offspring of apes running through some field or whatever, then that's exactly, you know, our, the, see, we see our society today with people acting like animals, vicious animals, because they think this is a one-time thing, let's get all the gusto, I'm here. The ape was my father, and uh, when I pass in this life, uh, I'm done with it, and I'm just going to pass into oblivion. So they're living out our social doctrine, our Darwinism. The Christian is limited by the, that they're here to worship and praise the royal family. The Jesus God is so egotistical that he wants to be surrounded by people saying, Oh, how great you are. Oh, how wonderful you are. <laughs> And then these people are saved, and those who don't tell them how wonderful he is, all these are bad ideas about God, about self. And they totally eliminate our ability to move beyond very low level understanding. Does that help answer? Yeah. It has other dimensions. Anything else? Any other questions? <clears throat> what this reminds me of is on a, uh, an internet forum uh, I manage, there are people who call themselves objectivists. And they are like... <laughs> <laughs> this is really funny. That's pretty funny. No, it is. It's true. They're it's they, like they, you they come up and get in the thing too. <laughs> a sweet in there too. Come on. Look at your... Own, you own the camera. Look at it. It's Sean's camera. Oh, all right. That's well, you borrowed it. <laughs> okay, I said it up. I'll put it here. Okay. Sorry. Yo, go. Cool. Look who's here. Uh, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you'll watch this. Okay, so these guys, these people call themselves objectivists and they call other people subjectivists. So they consider themselves scientific, focus on, you know, science is it and everything else is just. Believing in unicorns, or you know that kind of they, they they liken all this stuff to believing in unicorns or fairies or everything else. So they say, if you say oh, I had this experience, they say, well, if you can't uh, prove it to sign using scientific methods like double blind tests or whatever, that's rubbish. It was you were the something was a placebo, you know, like a, a some external thing was causing you to believe that you experienced this, etc., etc., etc. And they won't. And the, the the interesting, and I find this interesting because, like fundamentalist Christians, they externalize all. You know, they have the cross, and they, you know, the God is an thing external to them, and they I find the parallels. So I go and tell these people, do you realize that your belief in objectivity is subjective? And they go off the rails, and <laughs> they just they they start abusing me. Um, and yeah, and if, and if you if you show them that they're 
they are uh, that they there's a belief system they're following. They become really abusive and get kicked off the forum. Uh, I've got notes now. Thought what they were. Um, so the the thing I observed was that you know a person might be religious and they they first externalize <coughs> God. God is an external thing. It's a church. It's the something. But they do that because they can't. They're now at a level that they can understand inner realities. And that's the only kind of God. Paganism is a natural expression of carnal man. And then I was going to say, from there, they move, if they move from there, like you did, they start to see things internally instead. And they move these... Well, they, like every one of us. We all began this world in the same ignorance as everybody else. So, I forgot what I was going to say. I'll give you one second. I wrote notes on the computer and I forgot what I was going to say. Take the computer with yeah. you. I should do that, shouldn't I? Hold on. Okay. So, okay. So, we were at, um, uh, the other example was uh, people who pray for peace because they, they, they pray that. God externally will come and bring peace to them without, like, uh, I remember there's Bob Essien on the forum, was always talking about praying for peace. I remember you got pissed at me so much I left the forum. Because Alan right. said, if you pray for peace, but you don't become peace yourself, then the laws have to bring about peace through violence and, and other means instead. And yeah, Bob Essien got pissed off about that and left. So, uh, that's why Alan talks about becoming the prayer. You have to become these things that you, you pray for. And you know, that's, that is doing works, essentially. Working on yourself and becoming what you, you aim for. The thing, I don't know if you're on the, on the PAL talk, we, talk, I talked to, we did uh, triangulation, where it was working on the personalities. That was a few years ago when Ra was on PAL talk, I remember. Well, I've talked about it on a number of occasions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, for example, I had a really good experience doing that where you remain conscious, you remain breathing, aware of your breath, and then you go deliberately into a situation that you know switches your personality. And that for me was like, you know, my driving personality, the one to get out and beat the hell out of other drivers. And uh, that's the one I talked about where, you know, I, until I got in the car, and the, when the car started moving, because I was practicing consciousness, I could catch the shift and then I could talk to that personality from the perspective of other personalities or my leader and, and you know, talk it and calm it down and stop it wanting to get out and beat other drivers and drive a bit more carefully. And through doing that through other personality shifts, gradually, that's, gradually you, you become conscious of your shifts and conscious of your personality. And like it got to the point, I think, I think Alan said something to me last night. Uh, and it actually invoked this personality that had been hidden for a while while I was here. And it was a perfect, because I'm relaxing now, I've been here a while. And Jacob thinks it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and now this personality that was sort of hiding in the background, too scared to come out, came out. And it was like, oh, where have you been hiding? And it was some personality that was scared of, of something or other. It had some, something attached to it. So that was a really interesting experience. But now I could see it. I can, I can step back and, and watch my personalities work. And uh, so that's probably the main practice. I mean, for me, that helped a lot. My wife, Flo, once made the observation that if all of her brothers and sisters was to give their perception of their father, it would be as if they're describing totally different people. They couldn't relate that this is the same person that they're talking about. So who does that perception belong to? Belongs to the individual people. And actually that perception, the father then, is setting up a reflection of what they, of their own inner consciousness, what it relates to. Only when they take, recognize that what they're seeing is a reflection of part of themselves and they can work on that and enlighten it, and they begin to move beyond whatever limitations there are. Who here really knows their wife or husband? There's those who say we live life alone, only our dreams, our own images, 
that we're surrounded by. And to some extent, it's true. Do you know Jen? <laughs> Does she know you? Or do you each know your own ideas? And to somebody else, you may be somebody entirely different. So which is the real you? You're living a life of projection. I guess your projections. I remember something that Alan told me, I think it was um, when we, when I uh, visited four years ago, but it always stuck in my mind because of the simplicity of it. It was, um, uh, I'm par paraphrasing it because I can't remember it exactly as he said it, but it was about uh, realness and seeing a reality in people, but it was something like the real that you see in others depends on how much, it depends on how real you see yourself. I mean, how real you become, how real you become yourself. And, and until then, you can't really see the reality that's, in, that's within a person. And it kind of uh, connects to the saying about hypocrites and removing a beam from your own eye in order to see what's in another person. And I want, also, I wanted to mention something about what, what Amos said about his triangulation experience. Most people could probably never do that because Amos has cheated. You know, he has all these information. He has Alan here talking about triangulation. He has Flo talking about triangulation. He has Crystal. So, is you talking about triangulation? Yeah, me too, talking about triangulation. So, he has all this time prepared. That's why I mentioned the preparation. He already had himself in the proper mindset. He already has, he already has working, I guess you could say working personalities that want to do this stuff. Most people, they, have, they don't have that advantage. There is no advantage there. They, they're lost. How can they apply triangulation when they don't know anything about personality, you know, any of these things that Amos does. So, certain personalities that were, um, that in Amos were developed, not developed, but had the potential to be developed and, 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 um, and were attracted to these uh, concepts, they were able to build upon them. And through building upon them, he was able to prepare and actually do triangulation and develop those parts through triangulation. Because that's important, you know, preparation. To me, preparation is one of the most important aspects of doing anything. Because I don't see how an individual can do anything if they're not prepared. Because otherwise, they're just at the whim, they're just at the whim of their, of their actions, of their unconscious actions with the law, the laws will just give them back these actions that they do unconsciously. It's like they, a chicken running, running around without their head. Their head is somewhere else and their body is somewhere else. Do you remember sometimes we get some, you know, I think, I don't remember who, I remember a lady came to the forum and she said, I think Ellen criticized something she said, as you do, as tends to happen. She said, oh, I'm more peaceful, I'm not angry. And we said, you know, someone pointed out she was angry. She said, oh, no, I'm all peaceful, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I don't have any anger in me, I'm all good, and all that kind of thing. And I then, think you should make them angry. Yeah, <laughs> or Rick. And then Rick soon, Rick. four or five posts later, they go screamingly angry off the forum and, and leave. And what I think happens is, you know, they, maybe especially in the new age groups, I guess, or the churches, is they all go and meet up, and they're all in one particular you know, happy, happy, happy personality, and and at that time they're enjoying themselves, but it, it ignores all the other personalities they have. You know, the one at home, the one that likes going out with, the one I, I like this example of. You know, when you meet your high school friends, do you notice your high school personality comes out? I don't know if you still meet your friends from high school, but 
uh, I went back to Australia and met all my friends from high school. And honestly, when they're all together, it's like nothing has changed for the past 20 years. It's like no different. The same jokes, the same positions in the group and everything. And uh, or there's, I had a shopping personality. I don't know if it comes out much. But I, I caught this one actually before the driving one, by chance. I was walking, I noticed that I'd walk through a store and I'd see something that was interesting and this personality would kick in and, and, and desire it. And I coined this a shopping personality and I, it's, I used to joke with women that I said, have you ever gone to the store saying you're not going to buy anything and you're just going to look or you're just going to buy one dress today and you've come home with bags full of shopping? And I said, the reason is it's because your shopping personality kicks in when you get there. And the home person, not the sensible home personality is not in the forefront. And that's why they come back with bags full of shopping. Or they just go there to, if they're not going to buy anything, just to enjoy being in that frame, in that personality, or they call the frame of mind, where they just enjoy looking at stuff and, and, and doing that kind of thing. And it's like the, the, the church goers and church, or the, the new ages and whatever they do. It's the same thing. And... Uh, but that doesn't work on the other personalities. That's just, you know, going around the circle of personalities and that's switching through each one. So, that's, yeah, I wouldn't have known, you know, I noticed this, these things invoking me before I knew about personalities, but, you know, I just time myself out go and go, why do I feel like crap? I don't know why, what's happened to me that I've suddenly become angry or something like that. And I realize that some personality in me now that's been invoked that uh, by the situation, and I can I can talk to the personality and deal with it. But I didn't know back then how to deal with it. Any other questions? Any other ideas? Funny thing I would think about. Speak up. Need the mic? Oh no no no. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking while I was talking, but the only thing I would I was thinking about when Amos mentioned people who come to the forum. One of the things that, um, that tend to, to anger them is that they are presented with realities that the mindset that they, that they have embraced has no foundation for. They, they hear ideas, it's like what Alan was talking about, um, about the atheist personality, about the atheist uh, mindset and the fundamentalist mindset, how it's the both the same. ones, the yeah, they're both different varieties. Yeah, how they're both the same thing, just different varieties of the same thing. They come and they hear they either they're trying to challenge you, or they or they come because they think that it's going to be like a, a sharing party where where they're just going to present ideas and you have to accept them. That's no way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where you have to accept them. And, and, and you say, oh, you're right too. You know, you're, like, you know, like, you're right too because everybody wants to be right. No one wants to be wrong. But, so when you point out that they are lacking in their perception, uh, then it evokes different personalities that come in to play. And those personalities come into play and say, no, I'm telling you, Joe, you know, this, what I'm saying is true, blah, 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 or, or you, why are you so mean to me, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And then, obviously, they're angry. And then you say, why are you getting mad about it? You know, <laughs> why are you getting mad about it? Why are you, why are you mad? And they say, I'm not mad, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> because they, they can't see the contradictions between them. So that's how personality works. One personality functions, and they can't see the contradictions, they can't see how this personality is this way and how that personality is that way. A person lives, they live in, they live in their last shifting, the la their last shifting of personality. The last personality they shift in, this is the only personality that they see. And then they move into another one, they move into another one. They have no concept that they are uh, a multitude, that they are a legion, like, uh, like it is in the scriptures. They, they can't see the legion inside of them. They think they're one individual in mind. They don't, they don't know that they have a lower nature. They, they can get riled up. It's interesting that the legion got cast into the swine. Mm -hmm. So those who are portrayed as swine are the 
most like that from the scriptures. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I observe with uh, the people who come to the forum. I used usually in the past I would <laughs> I would start to I would make a whole post where I like where I um, map out each mechanical function that they have, and that was really, that was really <laughs> upset. Them. I was like, <laughs> like, first you did this, then you did that, then you did that, and they get so upset by that. You get people like Chad who are used to it, who just go through the cycles and they're used to, used oh, to it. Chad is, and he just knows it, and doesn't do anything about it. Chad is just completely on autopilot. He doesn't even, I don't, I don't know how I would even describe Chad. He's like a new, he's like a, he's like a, he's a different case. I don't know how to even explain Chad. I don't think there's anybody like Chad who's come to the point. We got Steven back. Uh, Steven. Steven. But, yeah, the only, but the only thing Steven was guilty of was, was doing out the octave. <laughs> well, he's now, as soon as I say, how do you apply, I just posted, how do you apply this stuff to yourself? And he's not posting all about Steiner this and Steiner that, because he, does, he doesn't seem to know how to apply it. That, that's the observation oh, I made. Is reading Steiner and, and yeah, you know, he's impressed with it. But anyway, it's the, the it, coming into this form without the proper foundation of mind or the uh, ideas is really a stark awakening for most people who are not prepared. All right, are we finished? Uh,